Well, friends, thank you for joining us again for this ongoing study of uh, 12 Were Chosen, a study of the original apostles. I, I really appreciate again that, that you're a part of this class. Uh, my name is Dave Layton, and it's an honor for me to be able to lead this class. Uh, we're going to move now into what could be uh, classified as the uh, second tier or the second group of the apostles. The first group, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, uh, are, are always listed in the groupings of the apostles first, uh, th that being uh, apparently because of their closeness to Jesus and, and the role that they played. But that doesn't necessarily mean that these other apostles were not important. And, and, and in fact, we, they were important and they had a very uh, uh, important part of their ministry. And we learned from them, so we'll do that. Uh, but we're going to be looking at uh, uh, Philip and Nathaniel as we move into this uh, second grouping of the apostles. You know, quite often we, we've learned, we've heard that the best way to bring someone to Christ is by our personal relationship with them. <clears throat> uh, we have friends or acquaintances, people we know, uh, people we can be open with about our faith. Uh, we, we've already seen it with Andrew bringing Peter to Christ, to introduce Peter to Christ. But in this lesson, as we study Philip and Nathaniel, we're going to see that again. We're, we're going to see how that is very effective. So we, as we've stated before, as, as we progress through the Gospels, through the list of the apostles, that we begin to see less and less mentioned about them uh, as far as being directly mentioned in Scripture. I'll continue to focus on Scripture, what Scripture teaches about them, and of course then what we learn from them. Now, uh, remember that whether there's a lot or not very much information, don't discount the contribution that these 12 men made and what we can learn from them. So during this presentation, uh, we're, we're specifically going to be taking a look uh, about Philip and Nathaniel, some biblical information about them, and then we're going to take a look at what each of these men teach us. Well, let's begin by looking at Philip. We'll look at the uh, overview of some of the biblical accounts of Philip. Uh, Philip is the fifth named apostle on the list of apostles. <clears throat> He's mentioned in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Acts. But there's no details within the Gospels about him. And simply in Acts, uh, he's, he's listed. Now, again, John doesn't list the apostles, but he gives us insights into these men. Uh, he does give us some details about Philip. Our first introduction to Philip is uh, in John chapter 1, verse 43, when Jesus calls him. Uh, of note in this passage, uh, it, it kind of indicates that uh, Philip was one of the first apostles that was directly invited by Jesus to, to follow him. Uh, it's the first time we see that expression about following him. The record also states that Philip was from Bethsaida, uh, the home of Andrew and Peter, and, and that kind of indicates that they likely knew each other and in, in working together as fishermen. Uh, again, because of the, that was the leading uh, way of earning a living in that area. So they probably were involved with that as well. Uh, the passage also records Philip immediately telling his close friend Nathaniel about Jesus. Now we're going to look at that in detail when, when we talk about Nathaniel. But um, uh, we, we see that Philip immediately telling his close friend Nathaniel about Jesus. By the way, Nathaniel is also known as Bartholomew in the other Gospels. I don't want that to be a, a, a bit of a confusion factor. I, I'll touch on that when we get into the speaking about Nathaniel. Now, there are some other mentions of Philip that we see. Uh, in John chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, we, we read of, of Philip being tested by Jesus during the feeding of the 5,000. As, as you read this, uh, Jesus is, is uh, speaking there and there's this large crowd and it gets to be time to feed them. And Philip kind of wonders, uh, how are we going to handle this? And uh, Jesus, it says, knew what he would do. This was a teaching moment. And uh, it, it, by the way, um, I often think that if uh, Philip had a chance to retest, if Jesus would have said, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's roll the tape back here and let's, let me ask you that question again, I think Philip would have had the right answer at that time. I think Philip probably would have said, said something like, 
Uh, you know, I, I, I may not know how we're going to feed these people, but Lord, you do. Uh, you tell me how we're going to do this. Or, or Lord, I don't know how we're going to feed this. I'm going to trust you to show how to do this. And so Philip, uh, provided by his lack of the right response, a tremendous teachable moment for us to, to put our trust in Jesus. And so that's in John chapter 6, 5 and 6. Uh, in John 12, 20 through 26, we read about Philip bringing two Greeks to Andrew. Uh, these men wanted to meet Jesus, and for some reason, uh, Philip takes them to Andrew, and then Andrew brings them over. In John, uh, John chapter 14, verse 8, we read where Philip asked Jesus to show them the Father. Now this, this uh, narrative there, it's, it's actually an interaction not just of Philip, but also of Thomas, but I'm focusing on Philip right now. Uh, it was an opportunity to teach. As a result of this, it was an opportunity to teach, uh, Jesus to teach who he was as the Son of God and, and how he was unified with God, uh, both in his message and in his purpose. It would also lead Jesus to tell them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man uh, uh, comes to the Father. Uh, also about, uh, uh, if you know me, you know the Father. So no one comes to the Father except through Jesus. And uh, if, you, if you know me, you know who Jesus is. So, so Philip provided uh, the, the interaction that enabled us to learn that great lesson. By the way, uh, the, the name Philip was a common name. Uh, Philip the evangelist played a very important role in uh, the early uh, teaching and spreading of the church, but that's not Philip the apostle. I want to spend just a minute on that. Uh, it's just a point of note. <clears throat> Some people do have a tendency to, to get the Philips mixed up a little bit. Uh, in, in Acts chapter 8, the persecution of the church had begun. And the opening statement in Acts 8 tells us that the church began to face great persecution and the church was scattered except for the apostles. They remained in Jerusalem, but the other Christians were driven out of Jerusalem. A point of note within this point of note is that when those Christians went out, they took what they had learned from the apostles about Jesus and they carried it out with them. They took the gospel with them, the narrative there, uh, in, in Acts 8 states that as well. And we see there though in verse 5 that Philip, the evangelist, not the apostle, went to Samaria and taught them about Christ. Now since the scripture states that Philip the apostle was still in Jerusalem, we make the assumption that Philip the evangelist that went out there was the Philip from Acts chapter 6, the one that had been chosen to help serve the tables of those who were being overlooked. So we see that two different Philips there. Well, as, as we continue with the apostles, as I've stated, there's, there's a lot that we really don't read about them in scriptures. Again, don't discount their role, and there certainly are things that we can learn from them. And so what I'd like to do now is that. I'd like us to talk about what is it we can learn from Philip. Philip was the kind of person Jesus really likes to use uh, the focus was on Jesus. It was not on himself. Uh, like several of the others, Philip was full of doubts. Uh, he was slow to understand even sometimes simple concepts. Uh, he did not demonstrate that he was a man of vision. And all too often, though, that, that describes us. We're full of doubts. We, we, we have trouble grasping simple concepts that our Lord's trying to teach us. And, and sometimes we, we have trouble seeing uh, where are we going with this? Uh, what, what is the direction for my life? We just lack that vision. So all too often, that, that's just the way we are. And we learn that we have to be willing to follow Jesus through all of it. We, we keep focused on Jesus. Even though we may get it wrong sometimes, we keep focusing on Jesus and we'll learn. And it's, it's not just simply following, but it's following with trust. And so we learned that from Philip. The focus was on Jesus, not on himself. And even though he doubted at times, even though he may not have understood things at times, misunderstood things, he continued to be a faithful follower of Jesus. So uh, again, we might not understand everything, but we know Jesus is the source of our salvation. And so we don't give up. We get the answer wrong sometimes. And like Philip, we continue to learn from Jesus. And also, by the way, like Andrew, 
uh, we learned from Philip to bring others to Jesus. Philip's first action was to, after he found Jesus was to find his friend Nathaniel, also known as Bartholomew. In John chapter 12, it was Philip who brought two Greek men to Andrew to meet Jesus. We've already mentioned that. You know, again, I mentioned in an earlier lesson, but Philip really shows it here. A great lesson for us is in bringing others to Jesus. We ourselves might not know enough or feel confident enough to do it. So we bring them to somebody else to help that person come to know Jesus. Either way, we're either the direct link in the chain to bring someone to Jesus or we're an indirect link, but we're still helping to bring others to Jesus. It's okay, so as long as we don't give up, uh, we don't refuse the person, we find a way, either ourselves or through someone else, to bring them to Jesus. Uh, we can bring them to Bible class, to worship. We can invite them to a Bible study. We can introduce them to someone who can teach them. We may not know the answer, but we probably know someone who does know the answer. And we can either go to that person and find the answer and relay it or bring the person that we're trying to answer to the person who does know the, the, um, the answer to the questions. The method is not near as important as the result of introducing them to Christ. And so Philip teaches that. Again, we talk about, I, I, I talk about songs that uh, the uh, apostles would probably have liked to have sang, uh, to sing with us. Uh, I like the song, Break Thou the Bread of Life. I, I think if, if Philip was with us and singing that song, he would hearken back to the memory of, of Jesus feeding the 5,000. He would remember how Jesus taught him with the loaves and the fishes. Uh, but we see Philip through his life, certainly breaking the bread of life, Jesus, to others as he brought others to the master. Uh, we've noted that the first thing Philip did when uh, he, he met Jesus and learned who Jesus was, that he went to his friend Nathaniel with the good news of his discovery of Jesus. Well, let's leave Philip now and let's move on over into Nathaniel. We'll start by talking about uh, a little bit about Nathaniel and his calling. Nathaniel is named Bartholomew in the Gospels. Some scholars think it's two different men, uh, but given the references and association in the Gospels with Philip and, and how John carries the narrative, most scholars do think that Bartholomew and Nathaniel are the same person. I learn uh, most of what I know about uh, this apostle from John, and John refers to him as Nathaniel. So that, that's how I've come to know him. Uh, John chapter 21, verse 2 states that Nathanael came from Cana in Galilee and was likely a fisherman uh, since he went with the others to fish. Again, this shows some uh, consistent association with Philip, hence the name Nathaniel versus Bartholomew. Uh, he is listed in, as the sixth apostle in the Gospels and the seventh in the book of Acts. Now, what we know about Nathanael is uh, found mostly there, uh, as I said, in John. In John chapter 1, verse 43, we find out about his calling. Uh, this, was, this was an, an interesting uh, calling and an interesting event. Uh, it occurred in the same time period as the calling of Philip. Philip goes and, and uh, brings Nathanael to Jesus. But it's interesting that Jesus already knew about Nathanael. Uh, this, is, this is where uh, we, we read Nathaniel's great question, uh, can anything good come from Nazareth? And I like Philip's response. Uh, Philip didn't take that as a rebuff. Philip said, come and see. So we've noted that Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus. Um, Nathaniel was sitting under a fig tree. By the way, that's not just a uh, passing mention about Jesus saying, I saw you under the tree. It was customary for Jews to plant a fig tree in the front of their house. Uh, they didn't have, by and large, didn't have large houses. And so they would go outside to study and meditate and they would plant a fig tree. That was the custom. And as the tree grew, they were able to go up underneath the tree in the shade and study and meditate and pray. And, and uh, as the tree matured, that gave them the opportunity for that. So this adds importance, though, to what Jesus said when he initially spoke with Nathanael. He saw him sitting under the fig tree. Uh, now, as Nathanael is approaching, Jesus 
identifies Nathaniel with a very important statement there in verse 47. Uh, reading from the English Standard Version, it says, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Now some versions say guile. But rather than say Jew or Hebrew, Jesus said Israelite. And I read about that and it was interesting to find out that uh, this, this idea of Israelite is actually a religious reference rather than a nationalistic reference. He's a member of the Hebrew nation or he's a member of the Jewish nation. Israelite carried with it a very clear uh, religious connotation. And so if you interpreted that, uh, you, it's almost like you're saying, here is a man of God who is honest. Uh, now, after Nathanael's question about how Jesus knew him, Jesus identifies his knowledge of Nathanael's habit of meditating and praying under the fig tree, as we've mentioned. Some point to this as a, uh, a divine power of omniscience, in other words, all-knowing, uh, that Jesus was part of the Godhead, and having that divinity, he would have that all-knowing. Well, it's possible uh, there's some evidence there. Uh, Nathaniel must have thought that because note his response in verse 49. Nathaniel gives us a great statement in verse 49. He says, Rabbi, teacher in other words, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. That's a tremendous statement and it shows uh, a level of faith in, in Nathaniel believing who Jesus was. Uh, go back to what Philip said when he told Nathaniel about Jesus. I have found who Moses and the prophets wrote about. And then Nathaniel follows that up with, you are the son of God, you're the king of Israel. By the way, that statement that uh, Philip is making there to Nathaniel, I have found who Moses and the prophets wrote about, that indicates that these men were studious. We already said Jesus knew that Nathaniel was sitting there as was customary studying and praying and meditating. Uh, and, and so it, there was that level of biblical knowledge that these two men had. And so now we see that knowledge uh, uh, coming to understanding as, as Philip, I mean, uh, Nathaniel says, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you're the king of Israel. So Nathaniel went from someone, can anything good come out of Nazareth? To that statement, you're the son of God, you're the king of Israel. He's the Messiah. They understand that now. Uh, and so he enthusiastically embraces Jesus as the Messiah himself. So that's the declaration in uh, verse 49. So Nathaniel goes from having some doubt to full conviction in who Jesus is. Well, I want to look at truly what we can learn from Nathaniel. We've looked at what we learned from Philip. Uh, we learned from Nathaniel that uh, we kind of move beyond what we think we know, our foolish pride or maybe our prejudices, uh, sometimes, again, conventional wisdom, what, what we think we know, what we think we accept. We, we embrace Jesus fully and honestly. That's Nathaniel, a man without guile, a man without deceit. Jesus came to save humanity by establishing our relationship with God through Christ. And, and uh, more importantly, Jesus came to save each of us individually. We, we've talked a little bit about that. And so it's critical that we have that personal relationship with Jesus. Well, that's what Nathaniel did. Nathaniel understood that you're the son of God, you're the king of Israel. He declared uh, that Jesus was his Lord. And, and so we, we, just, we just see that in what Nathaniel did. You know, I've already mentioned about it with Peter, but Nathaniel was also a seeker. Just as a reminder, there's two kinds of seekers. There's a seeker out there who uh, knows that he needs something in life needs to change. There's something bigger and greater in life than, than me, and, and I'm looking to find out what that is, but doesn't have a clear sense of understanding or purpose. That person then, as they become uh, knowledgeable of Jesus and accept who Jesus is, they now seek to fulfill the will of God through Jesus Christ. And uh, based on the narrative in John 1, we see that Nathaniel perhaps was the first kind of seeker, 
wasn't sure about the direction there in life uh, and, and turned to our Lord and found it. I want to bring out a note here uh, talking about seekers and, and Nathaniel kind of illustrates this for us. Uh, God always answers the seeker. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the writer gives us a wonderful statement there, one that, that we're very familiar with. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And, and so many times we kind of stop there. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The verse goes on to say, in fact, it, without faith, we wouldn't even approach God. But the last part of that verse is also very strong. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. So there sits Nathaniel, as is his custom. In other words, it's a habit with Nathaniel. It's something he does regularly. He's sitting under that fig tree. He's studying and praying and meditating on God's word. Our Lord brought him to understand him. Our Lord knew he was there and recognized him for that. God brings the seeker and the savior together. We may be the catalyst that does that. That's what Philip did. Philip brought the seeker to the Lord. We have that opportunity to do it as well. So later after finding Jesus, Nathaniel became the second kind of seeker. He now has discovered meaning in life, purpose in life through Jesus. Jesus asked to follow him, or asked him to follow Jesus and ask him to become a disciple. And he did. Nathaniel never ceased to be a, a seeker discovering and following Jesus. And that, that's what we need to do. Uh, we have discovered and followed Jesus, I, I hope, uh, anyone that's listening to this. <clears throat> and so now we have a purpose in our life to continue growing and learning how we can serve the master, becoming who our Lord wants us to be. So Nathaniel uh, grew into that. Uh, we've talked about uh, songs that the different apostles might like. Uh, I think Nathaniel would love the song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. As, as uh, he sang that song, he, he would have thought back on his interaction with Jesus. Well, let me conclude. Philip and Nathaniel don't seem very impressive when we first see them. And certainly there isn't a lot of scriptural record regarding them. But again, when you consider their life's work, uh, their, their efforts to continually glorify the Savior, we see that they were heroes worthy of, of imitation is how one person describes them. We learn that Philip and Nathaniel were faithful servants to Jesus. We learn that they had questions and concerns, maybe some doubts and fears like anybody would going into something new or changing something. But we also learn that they continued to be a positive instrument for God. They turned their lives over to the Lord. They grew to become instruments for our Lord. And, and through their example, we see that we too can use our gifts, great or small, whatever they are, to become all that Jesus wants us to become. Well, this concludes our lesson on Philip and Nathaniel. Uh, I titled it Friends to All. So in our next lesson, we'll continue this study and we'll look at the apostles Matthew and Thomas. Friends, thank you again for joining us in this study. And remember, in all things, we give God the glory. Thank you.